Hello guys, I'm a software developer with a passion for retro hardware. I repaired quite a lot of old machines in the past and meanwhile I decided to make some YouTube videos to share some of my experiments with you. Let us talk about an interesting memory upgrade for this mainboard. It supports two types of memory. Into these white slots you can put 30 pin SIM memory sticks, like this ones. They are usually between 256 kilobyte and 1 megabyte each. So since we have 4 slots here, we could put up to 16 megabyte of RAM. And uh, here on the right hand, uh, you can put so-called dip memory into these dip sockets. This kind of memory was quite common on the early 286 PCs. And uh, in the time before SIM ROM became a standard, these uh, dip sockets took huge amount of space on the mainboards. I borrowed these chips from another mainboard to show you how they look like. And as you can see, we have uh, bigger ones and the smaller ones also. Um, the deep memory is actually the bigger ones. And about the smaller ones, I will talk to you a little bit later. The interesting thing about the deep memory is that it was also used on the graphic cards. Take a look at this Western Digital graphic card. It has 8 dip sockets and you can put up to 1 megabyte of memory into it. But it currently has only 512 kilobyte of RAM. And these are the same chips which you could put on this mainboard. Another famous example is this Tseng ET4000 graphic card. And it has 8 chips and all in all 1 megabyte on top. The interesting thing about this mainboard, which I repaired some time ago, is that it supports two different types of memory, the SIM and the DIP memory. So I've been asking myself, what if I could max out the memory and use both types simultaneously? The first question is, where to get more of such chips to upgrade this mainboard? And even if I would have more of them, there is another problem. If you look carefully, there are some smaller dip sockets for another chips, which I've been talking about before. In the sockets, you can put so-called parity chips, which are used for memory error protection. So back to the question, where to get these chips from? Well, um, the memory chips I actually could get from the graphic cards I told before, but in the first place I don't want to disassemble a working graphic card and steal the memory from there. And the second problem are these parity chips, because they are usually not installed on the graphic cards. I could buy all of these chips on eBay, but they are usually quite expensive, so I had to search for another solution. Today you can easily buy a lot of SIM memory sticks on eBay and they are cheap like dirt. Some time ago I bought this box full of memory sticks for a couple of euros and there were also quite a lot of 256 kilobyte of RAM sticks among them. And I asked myself what is actually the difference between such a dip memory chip and a SIM memory stick. After a closer look on some of the 256 kilobyte memory modules, I realized that some of them are using the very same DIP memory chips which I could put on the mainboard. In addition to that, the third chip on the module is uh, usually the parity chip which we need to put on our mainboard. So as an experiment, I decided to disassemble some of the memory modules and grab the required chips from there. As you can see, I have a full bag of 256 kilobyte memory modules. So let us search for some which fit our requirements and start to disassemble them. So I found these four memory modules with 256 kilobyte of uh, memory each and um, as you can see, it has two dip chips we need and the parity chip also. So let's start to dissolve the chips.
Well, that took quite some time. Unfortunately, I don't have a proper desoldering station, so I had to work with the manual pump. Actually, it worked quite well, but obviously I was too excited and broke up one of the legs of the chip. However, I was able to fix this with a piece of wire. So this is the result of our work so far. Now let's do the funny thing and put everything into the main board. I'll put some contact cleaner into the uh, dip sockets because I don't even know how long they haven't been used before. I also put all the desoldered uh, chips into isopropanol to clean them from the flux and the dirt. During the desoldering procedure, I realized that despite that all the SIM modules are from the same set, that not all of the chips are made by the same manufacturer. But I don't think this will be a problem because this set worked as a SIM module set for years. When you push the chips into the sockets, always think about the polarity. There is a mark on every chip which shows you in which direction it has to be put into the socket. If you turn it the wrong way, they will probably burn. Now where everything is prepared, let's do the first start, fingers crossed. Oh, it's working and I see it counting and I see, uh, oh, well, I love this main board and one of the things why I do it is because it's booting so fast and I couldn't even read how much memory it showed. <laughs> However, uh, we will see it in uh, memory tools. For testing of my retro hardware, I'm using a um, tools suit prepared by Phil from Phil's Computer Lab, which I highly recommend to you. I will put the link down to the description. So um, let's start the test. And uh, as you can see, we have one megabyte of memory. This is exactly what we put into the main board. Here the um, system summary also shows us 640k and some extended memory. I would like to reboot once again to show to you that the memory counter in the beginning doesn't count up to 1 megabyte but only to 800 and something kilobyte. This happens due to so-called memory shadowing where system BIOS hides uh, some of the memory for performance optimization and that in the end uh, not the whole megabyte of memory is available for the operation system. Now let's put 4 megabyte of SIM memory into the main board to get hopefully 5 megabyte of overall memory. And as you can see, it counts almost to 5 megabytes. Due to shadowing, we don't see the full 5 megabytes of memory as I explained before. The BIOS says that uh, the amount of memory has changed, obviously, from 1 megabyte to 5. Actually, on this main board, you cannot turn off the memory shadowing. Sometimes there is an option in BIOS, but not on this model. And this was one of the problems which pushed me to the idea of this experiment. Back in the days, there was software which required at least 4 megabytes of RAM. Well, uh, since this main board shadowed uh, one part of the memory, so not uh, all of the 4 megabytes were accessible by the operation system, but only around 3.5, maybe a little bit more 
more. However, the limit was under 4 megabytes. So some programs refused to start. And I asked myself, what can I do to get the, at least the full 4 megabyte of RAM? And as I realized that I could put one additional megabyte as a dip memory into this mainboard, the idea for this experiment was born. And one of the famous examples for an application which requires at least 4 megabyte of RAM was a game Doom. Well, since uh, this main board has only a 386SX CPU, it will not be possible to play the game on this main board. However, with uh, only 4 megabyte of SIM memory and the shadow part, if you remember, it was not even possible to start this game on this machine. Now, where we have 5 megabyte of RAM, it should be just enough to be able to load this game. Here you go. And even if we would be able to play, it's still nice to see it's loading. And this is it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.